Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here a notebook for review. And this, as you can see here, is Hannah Muller. And uh, this has been provided by Hannah Muller and also Colt Pens for review. And this is the manuscript and it is a premium notebook. Now, Hannah Muller was founded back in 1584 as a paper mill in South Lower Saxony's Soling Uplands. Hannah Muller are typically a paper manufacturing company with high quality pulp. Hannah Muller make a number of decent quality notebooks. Uh, they have a notebook called the 1584, which is an A5 size notebook, which retails for around about 20 UK pounds. It's 90 GSM paper, 100 sheets, 200 pages. And then there's this one, which is the manuscript notebook. Uh, it's an A5, retails for around about £96. Uh, it's slightly more GSM than the 1584. It has 100 GSM instead of 90 GSM. Uh, it does have 96 sheets instead of 100, though, and 192 pages instead of 200 pages. And then there is the even more premium notebook, which is called the Iconic Notebook. Again, an A5, but retails for around about £120. Again, 100 GSM, 96 sheets, 192 pages. So I think let's take a look at this notebook. But first of all, what I'd like to do is just measure the dimensions of this notebook. Just to show you, uh, this comes in around about 21 and a half centimeters tall and about 15 and a half centimeters wide. So this definitely is an A5 notebook. Uh, you can see here it's, uh, it's got this premium touch to it. And you can see here uh, the premium notebook in 1584, the papermaker Merton Schwiech with the permission of the Duke of Brunswick, began to create premium writing paper in a paper mill in the Soling Hills. Back then, he worked by hand, sheet by sheet, using fine watermarks and deckled edges. What he began over 400 years ago with deeds and official documents, we are continuing today at Hannah Muller. And you can see there, A5, DIN, 192 pages, 100 GSM. It also actually shows you the, the type of uh, paper as well, so you've got a dot grid, etc. So I think what we'll do, we'll open this notebook and we'll take a look at it. So I want to be careful not to damage any of the pages here. So I'm just going to try and just slit that cellophane slightly. Um, I do like it when uh, notebook makers do put their notebooks in cellophane because it does protect the paper. And it, it protects it from a num number of ways. It protects it when it's in storage at a retailer or a distributor. Uh, it means that the pages are not going to get nicked uh, or, or cut or bent. Uh, you're also actually going to protect it from, from uh, dampness and moisture as well. A lot of retailers have factory warehouses. So, so I do like it when a notebook does come fully sealed because you know it's going to be in the condition that it came out of the factory. So you do have this little um, cover sheet here, which I will remove, a little ribbon, and it does just say manuscript premium notebook. Uh, and obviously the rear of that that you've already seen. But this is a notebook, and it's got this lovely sort of texture to it. Now, as I understand it, this is a sort of recycled leather with Saffiano embossing. So, so th this is, you can feel the, the texture to, to this notebook. There is also here the uh, brand name stamped uh, Hanamula as well. So you can see it there. But this is quite a nice texture. Um, it's you can feel it that the weave uh, of that almost sort of the grain of that leather there that you can see um but it also has a slightly sort of silky matte texture but a, almost like a protection layer over it so i, I don't think this is going to scratch uh, very easily 
if I open the notebook, you'll see here, uh, again, it does have, I'll bring it up close, the Hannemuller Fine Art Quality Made in Germany there. At the base of that page, uh, it does have uh, a blank page there, and then the Hannemuller History as well, and then signed by the CEO and President there. And... Every notebook comes with that. And then this is the uh, dot grid version. So if we just look through this, you'll see there, uh, it does have this dot grid that you can see there. A uh, very faint dot grid, but it's enough. I, I prefer dot grid uh, to lines. It it's, I always started out, and I think most people start out with lined paper. And then sometimes they will gravitate towards grid paper or squares. And then they'll find that it becomes very difficult to write on, on that gridded or squared paper. So they will actually gravitate more towards dot grid. And dot grid, I always find, is a, sort of a medium between sort of a plane and a line because it just allows you to write straight but also not have the distraction of, of ruled or lined paper there. Now, you do also get a, a ribbon here as well, uh, which is a nice touch. I, I always do prefer having a ribbon uh, in my notebooks. And if we go to the back of this notebook, uh, you just have, again, that, that slightly more thicker card there. Uh, there is no pocket in this. It is a premium notebook. Uh, typically, in most premium notebooks, I would say that you do not get pockets. Um, in terms of the notebook itself, uh, it is a leather-covered uh, notebook, recycled leather there. So you can see that. Uh, you can see the stitching there as well. If I just try to bring that up a little bit close, you can see there how that stitching has gone on. But because it is a leather cover, it's not going to necessarily sort of lay flat. Um, you you can sort of sort of move and bend the spine a little bit, but you are going to find that uh, this notebook, because of that leather cover, I, I think mostly because of the leather cover, partly maybe to do with the stitching, isn't going to lay 100% flat. Uh, but this paper is very, very smooth uh, paper. I, I do like this. The, the feel of this paper, it is 100 GSM paper. Typically, in terms of fountain pen use, most people prefer 80 GSM and upwards. Rhodia or Clairefontaine, typically around 80 or 90 GSM. Uh, you can all go up to 120 plus GSM, um, but it really depends on how the paper is formulated with the fibers on really how well it will perform uh, with ink testing and bleed testing in terms of a lot of wet ink so things like fountain pens and 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 other sort of liquidy uh, colored inks but uh, this is quite a nice notebook uh, it reminds me of uh, a lot of the the notebooks i have that that are essentially tomoe river notebooks uh 68 gsm although this paper does it feels very somewhat similar, but it is a lot thicker. So Tomoe River would be 68 GSM. This is 100 GSM. So I think what we will do here is we will try and do some writing tests, some ink samples, and we'll see uh, how well this, this actually performs. So what I'll do, I'll try and just bend that back a little bit to get it laying a little bit more flat there. And I think the, the first test we will do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here so you can see it. Uh, the first test I'm going to do is just a Schneider Slider Edge XB. And this is essentially a uh, ballpoint pen, but we'll see how well that this actually performs. So this is um, a Schneider. And it's slider edge. XB. So th this really is a uh, gel pen. 
not a uh, rollable. The next pen we'll, we'll have a look at and do a sample on is a, a Cross Peerless 125. Now, this is uh, an extra fine nib. So, uh, this is the uh, Cross Peerless. And it's the 125. And it's an uh, extra fine or E. It's an XF but uh, on, on the nib. But uh, it uh, is essentially a, an EF extra fine. The next pen we'll try here is a cross peerless 125 again but this is a fine uh, nib so this is the uh, cross peerless uh, 125 uh, and this is the uh, fine nib the next pen uh, is a uh, Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust, and this is a fine nib. So this is the uh, Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust in a fine. Uh, this is a Western fine nib. The next pen here is another Visconti Opera Master. And uh, again, uh, this this is uh, actually a medium nib, but uh, it actually writes a little bit on the fine side. So we'll do Visconti Opera Master. And uh, this is the Antarctica. And I'll put a medium here, although I do find it writes a little bit more on the fine side of medium. We have a cross peerless 125 in the platinum. So we have a cross peerless 125. And uh, this is a uh, medium, essentially. The next pen here is a Visconti, and this is the Davina Elegance in green. This is a uh, medium nib, so Visconti Opera, or actually uh, a Davina Elegance in green. And again, this is a medium, a uh, Western medium uh, nib there. And so far, I would say that I'm really liking uh, the the colour of these inks that, that is actually coming out on the page. There's also no uh, feathering so far. The next pen here is the Visconti Opera Master, and this is the Savannah. Now, this is where we start to get into a little bit more wider nibs. So this is a broad nib. So we'll do Visconti Opera master and savannah and like i said it's a broad uh, nib box nib the next pen we have is the visconti opera master and uh, this is the luna so this is where we now start to get a little bit more broader here so this is the uh, visconti opera master Luna, and this is a 1.3 millimeter uh, stub nib. So, if anything would feather in a notebook like this, it would certainly be something in a broad nib or something in a 1.1 or 1.3 millimeter stub nib. So, this is really going to test the paper quality in terms of, of fibers. The next pen is another Visconti Opera Master, and uh, this is the Stardust. So again, uh, this is going to, if any um, pen is going to uh, test this, this is going to be this one. So Visconti Opera Master, uh, and this is the um, Stardust. And it's a 1.3 millimeter 
uh, stub nib again. The next pen we're going to try is a Sharpie. Now, this is normally a definite no-no for most notebooks, but uh, this is a Sharpie, and this, this is a very big uh, nib. So I'm going to try and do the tip, Sharpie, uh, and it's a permanent marker. Now, most people are not going to use a permanent marker in a notebook but I just want to show the difference so that if you do want to use marker pens for whatever reason maybe you're sketching or or doing other things that, that you want to be able to see whether or not you're gonna get any bleed through on these and then the next one here is a highlighter here so we're just gonna it's a chiseled highlighter and a lot of people do like to highlight their work so we'll do that and for the last test we'll do another highlighter here in a different color and again just to show if you're going to highlight your your text there to see whether or not that will essentially bleed through to the other side of the page so i think let's take a look at this uh, you can see here that the, the Snyder gel pen performs very, very well. The Cross Peerless 125 in an extra fine nib, perfectly well. Uh, a Cross Peerless 125 in a fine nib. These are both fountain pens. Again, very well. Visconti Opera Master Gold and Dust. This is where uh, typically uh, pens start to get a little bit more wetter. So Visconti are normally a wetter nib. So again, that performs extremely well. We then move to a medium nib on the Opera Master Antarctica, and again, performs very well. Uh, the Cross Peerless 125 medium, I'm not seeing uh, any kind of feathering here at all. Uh, the Visconti Divina Elegance in green, I'm not seeing any feathering on. Uh, and that's a medium, very wet medium. The Visconti Opera Master Savannah in abroad performs very well. And then we get on to, to the... The Visconti Opera Master Luna in a 1.3 millimeter stub. I'm actually surprised that this actually performs very well. The Visconti Opera Master Stardust again in a 1.3 millimeter stub performs very well. Uh, a Sharpie permanent marker and also the, the the two highlighters there as well. So I'd say from the the front of the page this looks pretty good. I think let's turn the page and we will see. So you will get with most paper some kind of slight uh, show through onto the back of the page. Typically, it's not an issue because if you're going to write on that page, you're going to be writing over that text anyway, and it's going to mask it. Um, but what you're not getting here on any of these, including all of these fountain pens here, you're not getting any bleed through. You're just getting some what, what essentially is called ghosting or show through. So very minimal show through here, but there is no bleed through where that ink is actually coming through to this side of the page. The only time that you are seeing it is on this Sharpie mark, permanent marker pen, where you've got a few little black uh, dots here. Just move it up a bit so you can see that. Uh, you are seeing just a slight amount here. But again, it's not massive and honestly, I would say that this is pretty good premium quality paper. Likewise, you've got the, the two highlighters here. And again, slight amount of ghosting or show through there, but, but nothing really to, to talk about. That like This is actually premium quality paper. So uh, I would say that this is a really good notebook. Um, I'm typically used to Tomoe River notebooks. Um, I, I typically like the 68 GSM in, in notebooks, but I'm having to, to now seriously think about my notebooks because although this is more expensive, it is £96 at retail, and that is a little bit more than Tomoe River notebooks, uh, essentially probably about 20 to £30 more. But this is a really good uh, thick sheet, uh, 100 GSM paper. So for me, this is actually an interesting notebook. Um, 
what do I like? What do I not like about the notebook? Um, I like the the recycled leather, the reconstituted leather, essentially here. Uh, I like the the kind of weave pattern that that you do see here on on that. Um, you probably could stick a label here if you wanted to. If you had multiple uh, notebooks of these and you wanted to label them up, you probably could put a, a sticker here. Um, this is a premium notebook, so. No stickers are included. It really is more of a premium notebook. But you do have on the inside page here somewhere where you can actually write what the contents of this notebook is. Uh, there isn't actually any index pages here. The pages also are not numbered. So, uh, which to be honest, I actually prefer because sometimes I do tear out a page or two because I've made a mistake. And I always hate seeing the missing numbers on the pages. So, I think it's it's good that it doesn't have a uh, number of pages there as well. Um, what do I dislike about the notebook? There isn't anything really I dislike that, yes, you are going to get some bleed through here with a, a Sharpie marker, but how many people are actually going to write with a Sharpie marker in a notebook? Very, very few, I would say. Uh, in terms of fountain pens, though, and ballpoint, and essentially what would be rollables, you are getting a, a very good quality of, of ink. You're getting good consistency in the color of that ink as well. So uh, there really isn't anything that I dislike about this notebook, possibly other than maybe it doesn't quite lay flat. And as much as you try to bend that spine, it, it doesn't quite lay as, as flat as as perhaps I would like it to. Uh, I think once you start breaking in the notebook and start writing it in and, and, and you're, you're going from the start and you're working your way through, I think it will start laying more flatter so that you will uh, actually get a more flatter notebook. But uh, to start with, it probably needs a little bit of a break in. So that's my review of the Hanamula manuscript notebook thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you on the next pen video bye bye